Hi everyone. <laughs> Sit down. All right, we're good to go. All right, welcome everybody. Uh, today I'm going to talk about and give a little showcase of how we at Flashball Games have been using Houdini with Unity 3D and to build the worlds that we've been making in for our game Trailmakers. Uh, my name is Elvaret Unthorson. I am a graphics programmer for Flashball Games. Um, so first things first, a little bit about myself. Um, after finishing my studies in, in Iceland and Denmark, I worked as a freelance programmer, uh, working for various indie games. Uh, most notable one is the Silent Dates. Then I joined uh, Flashball Games in 2017, but was initially tasked with porting the Xbox game that they had made uh, from Xbox to iOS. And once that was done, I moved over to Trailmakers, and where my day-to-day -day job is basically creating shaders, uh, various tools for our artists, and profiling, reporting, and optimizing Trailmakers. Um, I just want to briefly talk about Flashball Games. Uh, the, game, the company was founded in 2016, but the story goes 10 years further than that, so, because it was initially founded as, as Pressplay. And you can see uh, Ole, he is, a, is the beautiful guy over there, one of the co-founders. <laughs> so Pressplay had a great co collaboration with Microsoft, but, and they ended up in 2012 selling the company to them uh, while continuing to work on the various IPs that they had until the company was closed in, in 2016. Uh, Flashball still works with some of the Pressplay's IPs, for example, the Kalimba and Max, uh, and we ported both the Kalimba and Max, the Cursor Brotherhood, to iOS. But our main focus is on trailmakers. So I am going to start with a trailer, which I hope I'm going to do. So, uh, uh, so what is Trailmakers about? Uh, it's about inventing and creating something. Uh, using your imagination to create something spectacular in a fun, and it's a physical game. You have a physical world that's going on there. So we give you access to various types of building blocks. Uh, think of it, we give you engines, tires, seats, etc., And you basically go nuts. Uh, you have the freedom to create ever, whatever you want. Uh, imagine cars, airplanes, uh, submarines, boats, whatever. Uh, and the game can be played as a single player or you can play with your friends. And, and so basically you just let your imagination fly and do something fun. Uh, but in order to make this work, we need to have good looking worlds. And for that, we switch over to using Houdini for all our worlds and most of the various and numerous objects that we have. Uh, these, I just want to have one slide that's showing, OK, what are the tools that we're using and the versions? Uh, because of time restrictions, we didn't have time to upgrade Houdini uh, at the time. But that is exactly what we're doing and going through right now. Uh, we started working with Houdini around two years ago. And I'm going to take a little bit of credit for that, because I saw a tweet that showed some cool Houdini effects and talked about it during lunchtime. And my, one of the artists just fell in love with that and said, OK, please try a demo of that. I'd love to do more, and then decided to switch. So I take full credit of us using Houdini at Flashball. <laughs> yeah, yeah, thank you, thank you. <laughs> um, 
but the reason, is, why did we love it? Why, why did we switch? Why, why, what was the benefits that Houdini gave us? Um, I actually forgot to mention that, but in, in the flashbox scene, we I mentioned that design is king, and we are very design oriented, and Houdini is giving us the freedom to do that. Um, just to give you a little bit of detail what that means for that, uh, when Flashbulb was starting, this is a year before I started at Flashbulb, they made a rough prototype of the game. And as you could see maybe in the trailer over there, we have pretty big worlds, and that, that is kind of the focus. We want to have many and big worlds with large terrains. In the prototype, uh, they quickly realized that in order to make that, during the older way, is that there's a lot of hand painting and placing which was required, and which made the entire workflow super slow. That's, that's totally the opposite of what we want to do with Flashball. So we think about, okay, what are our needs? We need to be quick to create new islands, and that is exactly what Houdini offers us. We need to be able to tweak as we see something is wrong, something is tweaking. We need to be able to do that quickly, and preferably inside Unity. Basically, we want to tweak and test over and over and over. We don't want to continuously go to our 3D software, change the model, uh, change the asset, re-import, OK, make another build, test it. Oh, it didn't work now. OK, we have to do that again and then again. So you can imagine the hours of wa basically wasted hours by doing it that way. Uh, our level designers, when they are tweaking and testing, they are using a final version of our graphics and models when creating their levels. Uh, the model is ready, and they just have to place and, and put things in the correct manner in Unity. This is a screenshot of the prototype that we made. And so all you can, uh, everything you can see here is hand placed. These trees, these rocks, and, hand, and kind of made the terrain go up there. That's all hand done. Uh, here's another picture of that same prototype. Uh, so you can, OK, I'm going to go back just to show you this and this. So imagine looking at these shots, and let's compare what we have now in, in Trainmakers. So there's a big, big difference there. So you can, totally, you can see the, the scale is totally different. Everything is much larger, and, and there are numerous objects that we have. And so in, I think you can see here in that screenshot that the we have there thousands of objects, all created by Houdini. The terrain, the hills, the bridges, everything. Um, this picture is taken from our sandbox island, where our players usually go a little bit nuts. So we just have all the blocks ready, and you can build whatever. So they get to enjoy what we have created in Houdini. They're flying around these cliffs and islands. And, and yeah. Uh, here's another screenshot. This is taken from our rally island that we're about to release. Uh, uh, and the same thing goes here. You can, you can see how, how huge difference there is from our prototype that we had. And Houdini is letting us do that quite easily. Um, I want to mention also a little bit how our workflow is at, at Flashball. We have one artist that is totally dedicated to Houdini. He's the one who creates all the assets that we do. And then we have three level designers making the worlds that we have. So they ask him for a, a mess or a prototype that we can use, and they place that in the game uh, while adding some fun challenges at the same time. Uh, so once we have something workable, we do some internal testing, tweak things a little bit, and, and make changes as we need it. And then we get new people, preferably with no experience of the game, to play in these worlds. And, and this is, again, OK, we don't have to go into Houdini to change the asset. We simply go into Unity and, and use the tools that they have there, and change our assets there. So it's a lot, lot faster than it used to be. Um, I'm going to give you some examples of the stuff that we are creating with Houdini in, in our game. Um, these are kind of the main things. Uh, we use Houdini to mold the terrain. Uh, we then use it for the thousands of cliffs and trees that we have. And each world contains some bridges, then barriers, some scaffolding, and finally, overhangs. Um, uh, here, I'm giving an example of Cleveland. This is the Houdini art artist that we have. This is him creating uh, an example of how we would make a terrain using Houdini. 
uh, we are just simply using the Unity terrain and we use 3D shapes created in Houdini to mold the terrain. This makes for a very natural workflow for our level designers. They are easily able to tweak things like slopes, hills, and et cetera. And in, this, in the end of this, Gabe, you can also see him add some splat maps to the terrain. Um, then, once we are done with creating some nice terrain, we want to populate it with some interesting objects. And here you can see an example of that. And the same thing goes with this. We, we need to, our kind of demand is that we are able to easily tweak and, and, and manipulate these, these objects. Um, here's another screenshot, uh, another look here, uh, oh. and another here. So you can see we are kind of, we have already made the terrain and now we're just placing various cliffs and objects around these. Uh, here is an example of how, how Cleveland is changing and creating mountains and cliffs and how they're easily manipulated. Uh, uh, uh. We have basically have numerous meshes that we can choose from and add to whatever mountain that we're working with and with great variations. Uh, in Trailmakers, we are using GPU-driven rendering. So we, all these objects, we pull the data uh, and place them into buffers and do our own uh, frustum and occlusion calling and distance-based LODing using compute shaders. Um, then, after we have placed all these instances and all that, we have some bridges. And the same thing goes with that. We need to be able to kind of manipulate these bridges inside Unity. We, we can't have be going into Houdini all the time. Oh, it needs a, a little bit sharper bend here, and then go back into Unity. Oh, no, that doesn't work. Oh, it needs two, two, two years more. So uh, here's another example of the bridges that we have. I think, if I'm not mistaken, this is in Rally. Uh, um, and here is the model of the bridge inside Houdini. And here is how we use it. So the same thing. Our, our Houdini artist, he creates this asset, and then our level designers take that, put that in the world, and boom. They're able to tweak and test, make it wider, bendy, whatnot. Yep. Uh, then with all these uh, races and race islands, we had wanted to add some barriers as well. Uh, barriers can be laid all along our racetracks and we use them to guide our players a little bit. Uh, so here's another example here. And they need to be flexible and follow the terrain as we run through. Uh, here's the model in Houdini. And and then we have uh, some scaffolding as well. And they come, like, like everything I'm mentioning, they come in all sizes and we want to be able to, uh, we need to be able to adapt the size to what we need for each challenge. Uh, you, get, you can just imagine the headache of having to create a different model for each one uh, in, in all these islands that we have, using the old kind of traditional way of making the model, putting it in. But this, all of this is manipulated inside Unity. And here's the model inside Unity, inside Houdini. And finally, we have some overhangs. Uh, we need things that, that can overlap, things like natural bridges and, and caves. And Houdini is, Houdini is giving us the power to kind of create and tweak these things. Uh, so future plans. Uh, we are currently in the process to up great to Houdini 17. Basically what we want is you use Houdini for everything terrain related and, or simply everything in our environment. We've been using some, some third party tools to help us out with things, but right now our goal is to remove all of them and just explicitly use Houdini for everything. Uh, I asked Cleveland, uh, our, our artist, to make us a video of how he is making a terrain right now. So. I, he took one and just showcasing how easily he, he can make a terrain using just simple 
Unity shapes, so boxes and spheres and stuff like that. And this is what he made for me. Mm -hmm. I probably have to. There we go. Here you can see him use just a set of simple shapes inside Unity to create this pretty awesome terrain. Uh, that is very likely going to end up in the game. If I, uh, so, so it's just a simple add and subtract that you see here that he's using. Um, so that kind of uh, uh, concludes what I wanted to show you what we've been making with Houdini and Unity. But we are releasing tomorrow Trailmakers on Xbox. So I thought it would kind of appropriate that I would show you the new trailer that we have. And so here we go. So yeah, so that is, yeah, that's, so that's going to be released on Xbox tomorrow. We've only been on Steam for the, for the last, what, year or so. Uh, so yeah, it's pretty exciting. Uh, it's kind of good that he, he went over time because I am way faster than I thought I would be. <laughs> so are there any questions? Fully sure, actually, when I when I mentioned that, that is that is why I have Melissa Cleveland's uh, email over there. Uh, he would be able to respond, but they, he is using the tools from Houdini and their kind of scripts into that, and then that that kind of molds. We are using the Unity terrain, so it is just simply modifying that all the terrain height and all of that. So. so yeah. Yeah. 